This video is sponsored by Liquid IV. More on them after the reaction, people. Citizens of the Reject Nation, it is time to get our hunger on with a ballad of songbirds and snakes. John, how are you? I'm excited. That's good to hear, John. Uh -huh. I think you're doing a reference. I've only seen the Hunger Games movies one time, but I'm ready to catch every Easter egg in reference. <laughs> yeah, baby. I'm going to do it all. Watch, guys. We're going to nail it. What did you guys think of this movie? Did you like it? Is it good? Does it live up to the previous trilogy? Leave your thoughts down below. Low. You know what to do. Leave a like. That'd be great. Also, thank you to Prepper for helping us set it down these highlights. Full length reaction watch along. It's where you sync up with your own copy of The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. We cannot mention this movie without mentioning the whole title. No. So anyway, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. That is available for our Super Sexy Regis at our Patreon page. And over there, we cover several things exclusively with highlights and watch alongs included. Ready to get your game on? I'm ready to watch Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Me too. Let's Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Let's Oh, the, the dark, dark days. days. Three years prior. Oh, man. And ten years before the first purge. There's some food over here. Quick. Whoa. Whoa. Damn. It's like a warg. Threat eliminated. Oh, man. The butcher. Why is he doing that? He's starving. Cannibalism. Come in, ignorance and want. Your father is dead, Coriolanus. It was a rebel, they say. A trap out in the forest. That's why he hates rebellions. And especially why he hates twelve. <laughs> It's up to us now to make him proud. And he was just out in the snow. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> Ooh. Finally get to learn about my favorite dictator. A child of fire. Three years later. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta grow up fast in this Hunger Games streets. <laughs> I guess where's the shirt? You don't need a shirt. Look at you. Yeah. Don't insult us, man. Look, I did it. I, I did something. <laughs> and you should really eat something today. Save them for granddad. You look so handsome. Oh, it's going to be a tragic downfall of him. Yeah, it's going to be real sad when she dies horribly. Future president of Panem, we salute you, Justimo. <laughs> she is a real ray of bright energy, though. Got the grades. Never missed class. Ten years. Is that why he... Even Dean Highbottom can't deny us this now. Highbottom. Highbottom. What's the first thing you'll spend the prize money on? New dress? More bleach for the curtains? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> oh, something so simple. It's the plinth prize. We'll be able to pay the rent. Snow lands on top. <laughs> it does. It does. Gravitationally speaking. But do flowers grow in the snow? Yeah, this looks great. Yeah, it's a badass statue. There's something excited about returning to the world of the Hunger Games. Yeah. Are you sweating? It's reaping day. We gave Driver the morning off. Ugh, that ingrate should be begging to chauffeur you around today. Just don't forget, I was your class partner while you're gloating over the Plinth Prize. I volunteer as tribute! <laughs> Sorry, he said Driver, so... That's a snazzy shirt. What are those buttons? Tesserae? That's why they remind me of the maid's bathroom. Have you tried this lamb? <laughs> it's scandalous. <sighs> I'm in the vault. <laughs> Daddy and I teach you table manners. Maybe he would have if he wasn't so busy running the country. Hey, they called us here for the Plinth Prize, right? I hate all of you guys. <laughs> Plinth. And look at his spawn. Ugh. Who would have thought that you could buy your way into the capital? I mean, of course you can. I don't like him, Arachne. I tolerate him. His district. As I do with all plebes. I heard one more time how immoral these Hunger Games are. I'll put him in the arena myself. No. So, Janus, you made it to the reaping for once. And you made it to graduation, Festus. We're both shocked. Eh, <laughs> burn. Hey, listen, I know you have high hopes for this, but there's no prize today. Not anymore. What is that supposed to mean? You got some inside, inside intel? <laughs> oh, oh, Viola. 
I am Dr. Volumnia Gall, your humble head game maker in charge of the War Department and all its affiliated concerns. That is a credential. I've broken free of my laboratory to examine you, the leaders of the next generation. Seems like an evil scientist. Cross with like an eccentric old witch or something. <laughs> yeah. I am honored to introduce to you the creator of the Hunger Games themselves. Here we go. Ooh. Dean Casca Highbottom. Uh, is he a drunk? <laughs> Does he know things? I have summoned you all here today for the 10th annual reaping ceremony, in which we choose two children from each district to throw into the capital <laughs> arena to fight to the death in the Hunger Games. He does not seem proud of this. And here sit our own 24 top prospects, all waiting to hear the results of hard study in this prestigious institution, eager to learn who's won that plinth prize, no doubt. That's all they can talk about. I am here to tell you that there has been a change this year. One final assignment to prove your worth. A Triwizard Tournament. The esteemed citizens of the capital have grown bored of the games and simply aren't watching anymore. And if the games are to continue at all, there must be an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Head game maker Dr. Gall has stepped in to... Spice things up. The Plinth Prize will no longer be determined by who has the best grades. But... Who is the best mentor in the Hunger Games? Oh, he's going to mentor someone in the Hunger Games. Dang. As the reaping progresses live, I will allocate each district tribute a capital mentor behind the scenes, one who must just persuade them. Just to get them emotionally involved. Obviously the best mentor will be the one whose tribute wins the games. What if I get a pathetic runt girl from one of the four districts, like eight or 12? Oh. She's gonna die in two minutes like they did last year and the year before. Don't be strictest. Your role is to turn these children into spectacles, Miss Crane. Victory in the games is only one of our considerations. Your entire future rests on this last project. It's how much they connect with the contestant. That anyone caught cheating to give their tributes an unfair advantage will just have no future at all. Because you'd be oh, dead. That's a death threat. Corio's gonna get a 12-er. Let the reaping ceremony begin. I love Peter Dinklage, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is so great. Boy. Everywhere goes he goes. To Livia Cardu. <laughs> I got a good one. <laughs> how apt. Boy goes to Sejanus Plinth. Hey. We got the pick of the litter. Forget. I'm part of that letter. So brooding. You never forget. Oh, he's gonna get Rachel's echo. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> she was in. Yeah, right now. <laughs> Ten. Boy. Misha Wimsewick. Oh, he's gonna get twelve. He's got to. He's got beef with them. District twelve. Oh, he does. Belongs to Coriolanus Snow. Ooh, look out! You get the best looking one, man. Yeah. And she could sing. Lucy Gray Fair. Wow, this looks like when you wait in line for a ride at uh, <laughs> Six Flags. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one costume character and it's the rest of us peasants. Let's talk about the architecture. <laughs> Sing your way out of this one, Lucy Gray. Oh, look out. That girl got beef. What is that dress? She's some sort of clown? Hey. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Her makeup is on point. Gotta be. Even now, you have to be playing to the people. That's the a snake. That's, oh, and she's the songbird. Ah! <laughs> uh, oh shit! I got a troublemaker. Help her! Help not Emma Stone. Whoa! Zayom. Movie's so woke, hit women now. Yeah, we've gone that far into woke territory. <laughs> I only want to see people hitting women. Do it or Boris. If you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna be good. There is a power to songs, man. Power of harmony. There's a unity. It's almost prayer. Singing. Is she out of her mind? She's already doing the show, man. Uh oh. That the soldier's like, let her, let her do her thing. Yeah. <laughs> just don't tap your feet. Just, just don't. Capital says keep rolling. Cause it's just I know, dude. Word. He lucked out. She's going to be a star. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this mic is, is here. Who, 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 who put this mic here? 
He's falling in love. You can kiss my ass! <laughs> Feisty. He's got uh, Moxie. There's, there's a response. <laughs> Sup, bitches. <laughs> Lucy Graybeard out. Proud, I see. Like your father. You knew my father? He and I were best friends. BF's 4L. Your makeshift shirt and your too tight shoes trying desperately to fit in when I know the snows don't have a pot to piss in. Oh, no wonder dad and you aren't best friends. Good luck with that poor little song. Uh, 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 uh. Lucy Gray won't survive a minute inside that arena. So that means we have to make every second before then count. <laughs> I'll get her to sing again. I wouldn't sing a note for you if I was her. Yeah. She's district, Tigers. She knows we hate her and she wants us dead. How am I supposed to get her to trust me? Manipulation. Imagine it was your name that they pulled and you had been ripped from your home. Don't discount her just because she's district. Oh, man. You might have more in common with her than you think. He's going to play the game. Then he's going to end up falling in love with her. Yeah, he's going to go against everything he believes in. The roses. The white roses. I mean, she seems like she'd be smart enough to see through any bullshit, though. Yeah. She seems like an already well-established rebel. I'm Lucy Gray. <laughs> <laughs> you must be snow. Welcome to the capital. When I was little, my mama used to bathe me in buttermilk and rose petals. Uh -huh. I eat your rose petals. <laughs> <laughs> I eat it up. I'm your mentor. A rebel. What does my mentor do besides bring me roses? I do my best to take care of you. No! Blah. Good luck with that, gorgeous. Hey. You got spunk. Excuse me, can I? Can I borrow your gun? Hey! Seeing the ugliness of the system you help to perpetuate. You really stand out. Ain't gonna eat you alive, boy. You in the wrong cage? No. This cage is delightful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. We'll do it, too. Reaper killed a peacekeeper back in 11. Right, I, I say we all kill him. Oh. I'm in. Yeah. This is a wild idea. Y'all got family back home? Kill them if you hurt him. Besides, he's my mentor. I might need him. How come you get a mender? You each get one. Eh. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Protect her. Whoa, what the f Jesus. Nice. Oh, right in a cage. Oh, Jason Schwartzman? Oh. Is he young Stanley Tucci? He's young Stanley oh, Tucci. <laughs> Flickerman. I'm Lucretius Lucky Flickerman, a man who needs no introduction. You'll know me as your favorite weatherman and amateur magician. Hey! <laughs> the Capitol Zoo, where this year's tributes will be held here. On display behind these bars for your viewing pleasure. Oh, that is sick. A human what zoo. What disdain. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, you. In the red. Who are you and why are you in there with them? We're live. <laughs> Be there with your mentor. Oh, you could use the relationship to help elevate. Own it. Sing to them. May I introduce you to my neighbors? Response would be appreciated, but anything would be nice. <laughs> He's going on back there. <laughs> There's a sound barrier. Hi, how do you do? Oh. My name is Coriolana Snow, and this is my tribute. Lucy Gray Baird from District 12. Hi there. What's your name? My name is Pontius. And I'm from kidsinterviewbands.com. Where'd you find that snake? Oh, he found me. Must have been a music lover. My singing calmed him right down. <laughs> <laughs> that one, who might you be? You, oh, you don't know who I am? Don't laugh. Not everyone has televisions out in the districts. Wow. This is like if the purge succeeded. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm not actually from 12. You know, my people are Covey. We're like a family. We're musicians by trade, and we travel from place to place as the fancy takes us. At least, we used to, before the peacekeepers rounded us up. She's got such personality. Do you know my mentor? Says his name is Coriolanus Snow, and clearly I got the cake with the cream, because nobody else has even bothered to show up. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like her you. a lot. <laughs> She's running the show. The game makers did tell you to jump in the cage with them. They just said that it was a mentor's job to introduce our tributes to the citizens of Pan Am. If Lucy Gray is brave enough to be here, 
better, then why shouldn't I be too? <laughs> For the record, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> yep, that's important to note. But come down to the zoo and see these tributes before it's too late. And I mean, too late. Before they're dead. I'm Lucretius. Lucky Flickerman. That is a hell of a trick. Yeah, how'd you do that? I mean, she seems very capable, and uh, she kind of treats it like she's getting exposure. Yeah. For her music career. Yes. <laughs> she's been planning this. It's a great way to get some followers. <laughs> Your little excursion is in violation of about five different academy rules, Mr. Snow. You. I'm moving for the game makers to disqualify you as mentor immediately. Wow, what a jerk. Introducing her to people, you make it look as if one and the same as those animals. Oh. Tributes are human beings just like us. Shut up, dude. You're harsh in the vibe. <laughs> Snow fell down in the cage. It Whoa. Fell down in the cage. But it landed. Wow. <laughs> what is she doing? Everything. Maybe one day you'll be a game maker like me. <laughs> what are the Hunger Games for? They're to punish the districts for their uprising. They're for ratings. Commemorate the end of the war. Commemorate the dull, dull, dull. Oh. Punishment can take myriad forms. We need the emotion. We be asking ourselves whether or not they're right in the first place. You have a problem with my game? <laughs> we're two years old when the war ended. The oldest of them were only eight. You're not going to be a good mentor. Yeah. The capital is supposed to be everyone's government now. It is supposed to protect all of us. How making children fight each other to the death is protecting anyone. That sort of sympathy might interfere with your mentoring assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sir Janus is onto something here. Maybe we should be viewing those tributes as human beings. Ugh. What? I just wanted to get to know Lucy Gray. Like wanting to get to know a lion. Yeah, doesn't mean you let him. To make the stakes personal. Who will watch the games if they care what happens to the tributes? Everyone. I watched American Idol. People need someone to root for and someone to root against. We need them to invest. And if we bend a few capital laws, we could even have them place bets. Ooh, wow, revenue. he really instrumented everything. Yeah. He had a whole vision for how this could be even better and even worse. How to create engagement with the Hunger Kings. Yeah. I'd like you to write up a proposal of these thoughts tonight, Mr. Snow. Wait, you mean you might, you might actually use his ideas? If it'll help the ratings, why not? <laughs> Queer Linus and I are class partners. We do all of our assignments together. What a snake. Jeez, dude. It'll be an interesting test. I mean, what's I'll the harm? Back. They're saying the Hunger Games aren't working, so you should got to try something different. Yeah, why not? Emotional investment. This is the future, right? The they should yeah. learn their lessons from prior marketing tips. Yeah. <laughs> but why does this experience leave him so cold? My classmate back in two. It's not your fault, is I, it? Yeah, I know. I'm so blameless. I'm choking on it. <laughs> My father bought him for me, you know, at the raping, just so he could show me that I could never go back to two. Your father sounds like a. Yeah. But being capital is gonna kill me. So do something about it. Eat this bread. <laughs> Eat your bread sandwich. Quite the rebel. Oh yeah. I'm bad news. <laughs> Don't waste your time. The boy's bad news. Was that for us? It's Lembus bread. I'm not hungry. You think I can't hear your stomach growling just a bit? <laughs> you can't eat pride alone, man. What happened to his neck? A rat bot. Ooh. First night on the train. He thought you'd give him superpowers. Yeah. <laughs> man bat. He didn't sleep a wink the whole journey because he was keeping the bats off me so I would get some rest. What the f What? One thing I learned in 12 is that hunger is a weapon. Your friend over there sure knows it. That's why I keep all the hosts here starving. Yeah. I might have a chance to help you. I might even be able to get the audience to send you gifts in the arena. Food and water to keep you going. Microphones, a recording studio. You just have to try singing again to win people over. I don't sing when I'm told. I sing when I have something to say. Well, find something to say. The guards say you get money if you get more people to watch, and you say you want to help me. Which is it? Both. Yes. By helping you, it helps him. You seem like a good man, Coralina Snow. You have no idea. <laughs> You're a good man, Draco Malfoy. Sure would have been nice to meet you under different circumstances. One of your shows, maybe. Yeah. You could have had a drink. Oh, Could have done it. <laughs> yeah. Knock boots. Come on. Uh, wow, dude. Ooh, yeah. Go for it. Jesus. Whoa. That was great. Whoa. It's okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, look at me. Hold on. It's okay. I'll get out. 
This is not gonna help your whole thing with... Jesus! Yep. So she did. Oh, and the narrative will make it look like that a savage killed her. Yeah. This is how it begins. The war. It was my fault. I suggest that we get closer to the tribute. It wasn't your fault. She was sharing like a fucking... Yeah. <laughs> this was bound to happen somehow. She's not a rebel girl, ma'am. She's just a girl. <laughs> Trust me, that one hasn't been a girl in a long time. Wow. Oh, is she Hunter from Euphoria? I've been yes. wondering. She looks familiar. She will use you. You must use her, or you'll end up dead in the trees like your father. Yeesh. <laughs> Such like a soap opera whenever we cut to <laughs> anyone who's not part of the the players in the Hunger Games. Well, yeah, you're in, like, the most gaudy places dealing with, like, the most upper crust issues. Yeah. yeah. Half these people probably do have, like, a missing twin brother back from the dead. Our president has decided that the games must go on. Of course. Show everyone the capital is unafraid of such acts of terror. That would be given into a rebellion. Later this evening, there will be a special televised presentation of each tribute to our audience to, you know, get to know them. <laughs> you know. We'll have an hour to discuss strategy. I love how he's just playing Tyrion again. I know. Just <laughs> American accent Tyrion. Dressed like a friggin' monk. You may begin. <laughs> I like yeah. his attitude, though. It's funny. There's like a divide between him and Colin and Anders, but he's probably going to end up more like him than the others. Yeah. I'm going to win, and for that to happen, we need to make you more marketable. Attractive. Yes, we need a glow up for you. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Rule number one: Noted. Cover your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People really Just ain't all that hard. <laughs> Are you okay? Wearing my mama's dress is the only thing keeping me together here. It's like she's wrapping her arms around me. I cannot tell how sincere she is, or if she is intentionally playing him. Playing him. Yeah. yeah. I need you to sing in these interviews later, it's the night before the games, and your last chance to win people over. Cheapers. This moves quick. And send you gifts in the arena without their money. Maybe a guitar could persuade me. Maybe. <laughs> you really want to take care of me in that arena, Coriolanus? Give me a fender. Start by thinking I can actually win. No, grab coat. <sighs> I know for some reason Rachel Zegler's a controversial figure, but I think she's the best part of this movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, she's really, I don't know. Yeah, she's just full of this uniquely specific, distinct, pointed life. Yeah. Oh, these are the creatures in early in, develop early in development that they would put in the games? Yeah. Come and see my new babies. Ooh, so she is like an evil scientist. Yeah. <laughs> She's Step into out. my laboratory. She's out of a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I know, she was just back there stealing Ariel's voice real quick, and now she's in here. Your proposal. Which one of you actually wrote it? Well, there was I was inspired by Coriolanus yesterday, of course. Hmm. His little wedding idea. Yeah, all the little bell. Yeah. So it's your sweet writing on that page. Unfortunately, my assistant uh -oh. mistook it. There you go. There. Mm hmm. And line the shelf of this very terrarium with it. Oh, boy. So, Miss Dovecoat. Retrieve it for us, won't you? <laughs> yeah. all consider your inspired idea. Really smart. Really smart to speak up. Could not, could not read the room, could you? <laughs> they docile with yeah. those they can trust. Hey, some smart people are dumb as hell. If you've handled their food, for example, or if they've inhaled the sweat of your palm on a page. <laughs> retrieve it. Why don't you just admit the truth? Yeah, dude, seriously. Yeah. Wowie. I want my enemies to see a rainbow of destruction engulfing the world. Mm. Will she die? The pleasure in breaking ground in one's research is one gets to find out. <laughs> you better keep Miss Dubcoat's fate between us. I don't think her mother would be happy to learn how she caught this sudden flu. Oh. Sorry, I'm late. Whoa, what's up? I'm enjoying the weird experiences. I'm enjoying the plot a lot. I'm enjoying being back in the world a lot. Uh, technically, I feel like everything is really cool. I'm still yet to really connect with any of the characters. Yeah. That's the one part that I'm like, I really need that. Right. Sometimes it, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of like a Fantastic Beasts like, kind of Rachel experience. Zegler's a 
closest I'm coming. Yeah. But right now, I'm, 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 the part emotionally I'm most compelled by is just what's happening. There's other things emotionally I'm, I'm latched onto. Wowie. Welcome to the arena for the 10th annual Hunger Games. <sighs> you have 15 minutes to survey the space and discuss strategy. Dill, you stick by me, understand? Sir, yes, sir. Hey, Lumberjack. I love how gladiator like this feels, actually. Just you. Forming their alliances. Please, Corlinus, please don't let me die in here tomorrow. Wowie! <laughs> <laughs> <Or> today, <laughs> Jesus. While the mentors are there? Yeah, this is all part of the plan, I bet. Wow. Is this really happening right now? Yeah. Survey the space. Wow. Whoa. Oh. Help me. Oh, how crazy. Damn. In your position, begging for help. Who will the real mentor be? Oh, and she goes back to help him. She's the one I'm connected to. She's the best. Come on, the gate's open. Come on, he would have saved you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sc Scripto has some like really cheesy dialogue though. <laughs> <laughs> they were on set like this is really going to get to the people. Really emphasize that you. <laughs> it fluctuates the script. <laughs> it's like, like in the dialogue, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> look at her go. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Malfoy. Who's she, Gray? Where is she? She's alive. What happened? There was a rebel bombing. Oh. They must have been planning it for months. Four tributes were killed. Everyone's terrified, Gloria. But Lucy's the last. That gives her better odds. Oh, yeah. She's winning right now. <laughs> <laughs> Felix Ravenstill's on my boy. Not Felix Ravenstill. Rebels released a message. They said they wanted to tear down the symbol of the Hunger Games on live TV. You think he's giving them inside knowledge? Oh, I bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one. Peacekeepers are hunting him in the streets, but at least he has a better chance out there than he would tomorrow. Tomorrow? They're not still going ahead with the games. Oh, no. Lucy Gray. This is exactly what you didn't want to happen. But she saved me. I love how they always say Lucy Gray. I know. And she made it clear. You can't just say Lucy. Not, not Lucy. Lucy Gray. <laughs> Lucy, Gray, Baird, come out here with that guitar, you songbird. Hey, what'd they get her? What'd they get her? Did they get her a hummingbird? I do like the, oh my God, he's actually, she's going to sing. I wrote this song about a boy back in 12, and I hope he hears it. Uh-oh. When I was a babe, I fell down in the hall. When I was a girl. 100 donations, 200 <laughs> donations, 1,000 donations, 15,000 donations. <laughs> Went to the dogs and I live by my He's got some pipes, man. Yeah. Sooner than later that I'm six feet under. It's sooner oh. than later that you'll be alone. I love dark country. Yeah. Tomorrow I wonder for when the bell rings, lover you run your own. Oh, damn, it's oh. like a Johnny Cash tune. Yeah. So you're thinking, do they write stuff for this, or are these covers? Now what will you do when I go to my grave? Ooh. Wow. Whoa, she got the meta We all have we 50. <laughs> <laughs> 1,500, yeah. but you know, still not bad. We're pretty close. People sending in donations. Is that a dove no, guitar? No, she did it. No, this is a regular guitar. All right. Now, I don't love your odds, but may they be in your favor. Oh, oh. Way to own that line. The way odds. to own that line. How wonderful is this night that we all get to be here for someone's final performance? <laughs> wow, dude. Go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. You got a big day tomorrow. You got a big day to die tomorrow. What I love about the aesthetics that they've done is it's still futuristic, but they've taken like how the 50s imagined the future. Yeah, it's like a retro futurist. Yeah. And it feels appropriately like in the past of the familiar world, but still futuristic to now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Just nothing beats Jennifer Lawrence foaming at the mouth in tears. <laughs> 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 and for, all the whole trilogy, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, it's, it's the real heart and soul of the games. 
But hey, man, maybe Rachel Zegler will break down and do like a crazy ass crying scene. She's great. I love her character. No idea what else was about her. <laughs> but, uh, I love her. They have them sleep out there? Yeah, I guess so. There's no other, like, doors or anything. There's a hole down in the floor. Leads down to some tunnels. I've tried it, and you can disappear down there. What? The moment you hear that bell ring, you ignore the weapons in the middle, and you run as fast as you can for that hole. Wow. I can't let you die. I love you. You saved me. A secret. Maybe she saved you because she knew she needed you still. I'm more hopeful during the day, Dom, but when it gets dark, it's okay. When it gets dark, I'll succumb to the darkness around me. It's okay. I really hope they got this shot authentically. I am going to get you out of here. I promise. Back to the Covey, okay? Oh. 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 You know, ready. Is this real? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good question. That song. That song was... Payback, that's all. My old boyfriend, Billy Tope, he was cheating on me with the mayor's daughter. Whoa. Yeah, she got crazy jealous. She had her pa read my name up on that stage, and now everyone will know what they did to me. Damn. She must be using him or something, or, or yeah. in some way. I mean, she just, just seems so much kind of sharper and, and kind of detached from the bullshit of this than anyone else. It is not a gift. It's a loan. But don't touch it. Don't even breathe it in, because small amounts can be deadly. And there will come a time when you need this, when you need to act. We all do things we're not proud of. Yeah, is Lucy Gray doing that? We are going to win this. Well, what's Lucy up? Gray. There's a different shot of her. We're going to win this together. It's the electric company. <laughs> <laughs> Hunger <laughs> Games. <laughs> Hunger <laughs> Games. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter two. Oh, got a yellow flower to die. A friend of yours, Plinth. You might want to find him a seat near the door. Whoa. <laughs> he's about to be called out. Put on blast. I'm Lucretius Lucky Flickerman. Yeah, he's perfect. Because you can still see he's trying to prove himself. Yeah. In my hand an envelope, my prediction, the winner to be opened by me upon the big show's end. But how old is Stanley Tucci supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> how long of a glow up was that, really? Yeah. How much plastic surgery did he have done? Enjoy the show. I do like, like, Rachel Zegler is my favorite. Colon Iris, colonoscopy snow is great. <laughs> he's, he's good. I do feel like we still needed some stronger scenes with them before. I feel like we it need feels some a little bit by the numbers of what they do with them. glue to yeah. stick all this together. But yeah. specifically between the two of them. Yeah. It was the part where I'm like, I know where the plot's going, but it kind of just seems like the movie's like, we know where the plot's going, but they're not. There's, there's a little more meat on it. Yeah. Or so that way I'm like, ooh. I or, hope I hope she's not using. I want to. I'm more just like I don't know. I wonder instead of like, oh, I hope <laughs> more time to test yeah. their actual relationship through other means or, or like have other things intervene that force them to act off the cuff. Yeah, because that's like the core heart of the struggle here, the real conflict. Oh. <laughs> and I do like how like downscaled these games feel by comparison. Uh, yeah, by a lot. They're in one room. Oh, Make no. Make a symbol out of him, man. Marcus, guess we can all sleep better now knowing he's off the streets. Oh, he's gonna lose his shit? Yeah. The monsters! All of you! Yes. Get him on your side. I thought he was the kid from Stranger Things when we saw the trailer. <laughs> he does look like him. Thought it was this whole time. <laughs> Game Mazarazzo shouts out. Dress up four. Dress up two. One. Sing. Ooh. <laughs> but then the movie gets me again. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you doing, Run. Nah, man. She can't leave her dude behind. Oh, how barbaric. This wide angle lens, too. It's just like a royal rumble in here. Yeah. Whoa, nice. Yeesh. <laughs> ah, nice. the trident. <laughs> What's his name? Oh! 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 The bow and arrow. So many that Easter eggs. That's an instant vomit. Seems like it's gonna be a very short Hunger Games. Uh. Oh! Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> just, I'm just wandering around over there. Wow! What a great shot. Oh. 
I killed a man with a trident. <laughs> <laughs> Rick killed a guy. <laughs> uh oh. Oh. What you're seeing now is a live feed of security cameras. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. High assault neuroside pincering in on Lucy Gray. Pincering. Very tactical. Oh, she could squeeze through. Can Jessup? Damn it, dude. Pull him. Ah, no. No, no, no. Kick him. Kick his face. Surprising high assault. <laughs> ah! Oh, you feel that. You're like, what the hell happened here? Yeah. Where did they stab her? I would have stabbed her right in the butt. <laughs> well, he, this is my one opportunity. <laughs> 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 See what this is like. <laughs> Six tributes gone in minutes. If they keep it up at this pace, we're going to be out of here in no time. <laughs> wow. Oh, my dude. Is he asking for death? Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Citizen, send your money. Now, once they get your money, well. the mentor can choose to send in food or water. <laughs> Reprogrammed with facial recognition. This ensures that your package goes directly to your tribute. Isn't that right, Pop Harrington? Yeah. Yeah. The hell out of my face. The first drone. Oh. Cut her hand off. Oh, wow. Yeah. What <laughs> the fuck? I mean, <laughs> what? they did not master drone technology. Hey, the facial recognition do it did its thing, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. What do you want from that girl? Nothing. I want her to live. And the plinth prize would be a happy coincidence, I suppose. I believe I'd be entitled to it. Mm -hmm. Prize the girl. Mm -hmm. How convenient you don't have to choose between them. Ouch. Who do you think makes that final decision for the prize you so covet, Mr. Snow? Wake up. Even if Lucy Greybeard somehow wins it all, I will do everything in my power to ensure that you don't see a die. What do you have against this guy? Yeah, what do you do to you? How much do you care if she lives now? More. Is that the answer? More? Hmm. What did you sacrifice to make sure she could live and then she betrayed you? I just want to stay with her. Oh, boy. You know, what's in that water? What have you done to her? I didn't do anything, Jessup. Just, are you okay? I, I did endeavor to save you and to share this space with you. Sejana? Breadcrumb. I believe sustenance for a fallen comrade on his final journey, a District 2 superstition. Whoa. I need someone to get him out right now. You should send peacekeepers in. Only to have him bolt and hide like a rabbit. Ugh. Felix Raven still is fighting for his life in the hospital, Mr. Snow. I will not have these rebels make a further mockery of my games. Oh. If you get him out unscathed, I'll whisper your name in his father's ear. Uh-oh. And he has more power than Peter Dinklage. I'll freeze the feed for an hour. I estimate that's all we have until the people notice. Whoa. All the manipulations and machinations of high society. I think Gary Ross directed the first Hunger Games movie and Francis Lawrence directed the rest. And yeah. I kind of feel like this needs a touch of what Gary Ross's direction was. Yeah, where you really feel like you're there Gritty, on the ground grimy, observing yeah. this. Yeah. I think I need a little bit of that grid that Gary Ross brings. Eh. But this movie does prove that you can continue on the Hunger Games movies and world without, you know, the Jennifer Lawrence. That type it's, of yeah, you still make this is still like an interesting film. Yeah. And, you know, you get your social commentary in there. Sort of. It's the same social commentary the other ones. <laughs> more overt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly updated to include drones and facial recognition technology. <laughs> But no, they did, they just dropped drones in the first, they did the drones in the first other one. This is like the origin of it. Yeah. Or something, right? Like they shut them. Yeah, they had those yeah. little like thingies that'll bring you stuff. I they were. You need to go, Corio. I promise to get you up. Oh. I have to do this. I have to go where the cameras are. Is anyone watching this? <laughs> do you want to fight these tributes or fight for them? Because if you want to make real change, you need to stay alive. How can I make any change from out there? You're rich. <laughs> You're the only one who stood up to go in that glass, right? Yeah. yeah. You gotta lead the rebellion out there, dog. Better hurry up, man. Come with me. Spend your father's money. Do some real good. I'll just be another dead body in Gulf's one. Trust me. Come on, man. Yeah! 
Wow, enjoy the show. Oh my god, you can't you can't kill him. Yeah. Oh no. I don't wanna hurt you. Yeah. Dude Whoa, in the face, dog. Uh, oh why? he mad. Whoa, dude. This is bad. This is very bad. Move it! Over the gate! Oh I maybe. Over the Maybe that was a hint of the disdain that he actually does sh feel towards them. Yeah. My father. My father. Let the buying begin. I feel so bad for these spoiled rich kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who clearly understand the full extent of the system within they, which they exist. It's weird when the people from the districts got... When the people from the districts first got reeled in, they were portrayed as humans... Now that the game's a star, they were treated like s the savage villains. Of it all. I guess so, <laughs> like, What yeah. the fuck just happened? <laughs> or is it the intention that when you switch perspectives of that, you know, I don't know. You know what I mean? They stop being human and almost they were just savages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they all just kind of feel like a big gang of like rabid feral people. Yeah, like they're the of, villains. <laughs> yeah. No, I did definitely. I, I remember in the other movies, like them having this sort of, you know, nasty gang mentality here and there but yeah it felt like we were fighting morlocks just now <laughs> yeah see how quickly civilization disappears yeah fight or flight those tributes don't have a choice i was talking about you oh, oh all shit. your fine manners education background she witnessed she witnessed that the club who beats another boy to death to stay alive yeah it was a test if you want to protect people mr snow Protect the games. To govern them like your father. Oh. And it's essential you accept what human beings are. Animals. And what it takes to control them. Television. Oh, oh. I gotta make enough Hunger Games money to save the rec center. They sent me into the arena tonight, Tigers. Are you okay? I killed one of the tributes. Damn. And it felt like a release. Powerful. Oh, yeah. Look out. You got your first taste. Korea. I'm going back in. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get back in there. You don't have to pay the same price just to survive. People can be good. You can be good. You are good. Okay. It's your villain origin story, man. Something scintillating occurred. Bobbin from District Ooh. 8 slaughtered. Wow. <laughs> People are cheering. They aren't showing us what happened to that little boy. He clearly was killed right there. There's cameras everywhere. You said there were old cameras, Lizzie. Probably just another one of Coral's. Festus. Sit down. You haven't moved an inch. <laughs> or hunger, dementia. What you doing, man? Lucy, what is he doing? Something's wrong. He he wouldn't turn on her like. <laughs> what did you do to me? What did who do to you? Someone must have done something. Folding in itself. Wait, look. The foam. I think it's rabies. Oh my. Rabies. It makes you afraid of water. Send him a drone. Scared. Yes, away from her. Oh my. Vicar's going for her community pad early. I don't I have any idea. <laughs> Fly a drone right into him. I guess that's what I mean. It's like, here they specify. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and then he offered her water. Yeah. Like Mary Magdalene. Oh, look out. Yeah, they specified drones from the war here. I feel like that's that's more pointed. Oh yeah. Well, that's the thing is they do have like gladiator weapons too, like at least inspired by the different casts of gladiators in ancient Rome. Packing it in. Lucy Gray swarmed, cornered, mizzen, propeller. Sending a drone. Yes. For his community path. I'm going to flood the room. Hey Crow, do you mind if I take this one? Not a chance. Wow. <laughs> wow. Jesus. <laughs> and Here's free water. some water. <laughs> Hydrate. <laughs> they must have, should have stipulated something. That's a, that's a little too much involvement, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
develop the telepathic link. It's a terrible hiding spot. Yeah, it's not a good high ground. Do it now! Oh. Uh. Ooh, shit. I mean, she seems like a good person. Yeesh. Oh, Ooh. that trident is very effective. Whoa. Oh, damn. So smart. Oh, you're cruel. Oh, you real cruel. I let you get out of these falls. Wake up! Grab brush and put a little makeup. Let me go up here. They'll want to get their water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what? She can stab through that. Oh, damn! Did you get a finger in there? You really think you deserve that water now, Tanner? Let's all share the water. Look, you just said, watch the beam. Coro, it's Wovi. Oh shit! What? Oh no! Why did she step out? Yeah, come on now. Seven tributes remain. That's annoying. <laughs> oh, she's gonna try to drink the water. Damn it! Oh, that is sad. She's just gonna lay down. So, no. What happened? Maybe they'll all just have a sip of the yeah. water and just fall over. <laughs> I gotta hydrate my brain so I can think straight. <laughs> <laughs> How could they not be viewed as humans before? I don't know. Well, I mean, that's what classism does to you. As long as there is a ladder, there will be someone there to look down it and say, not you. Or is he going to give them a pyre? Yeah, man. A little mass grave. Are you going to punish me now? Oh, my dude. <laughs> cool. Felix Ravenstill, son of our beloved president. Oh, no way. Sustained in the rebel bombing. Wow. No, Felix Ravenstill. They will be celebrating this young boy's death as a triumph. Wow. Do not allow my games to give our enemy such a victory. They will not spoil the fun. Before the sun goes down tonight, a rainbow of destruction will engulf our arena. The rainbow of destruction. <laughs> yeah, it's back. There's to be no victor in these games. Dude, what? Oh, boy. What is the motive here? Gotta show absolute power. So this is a very pivotal game. Is there a tracker in him? I need to see Dr. Golf immediately. Yeah, she's taking, uh, she's completely open schedule right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, that announced video. Her phone's not been like, ringing off the hook. <laughs> no one's tried to, this one, first one to try to see me. Yeah. <laughs> I thought my eye would have the visitors out the door. Yeah. <laughs> no, my stitches, they broke loose. Come sit, pull down your shirt. Yeah. Seduce her. Songbirds. In the cages. This might hurt. What are we doing here? They gotta transport that to Oscorp Tower. Jabber Jays, we called them. Mocking Jay. <laughs> Sent them out during the war to pick up rebel conversations, squawk it back to us word for word. Wow. Whoa, cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. Was there a bird in the arena? There must have been. A failed experiment, but an instructive one. I'm rounding them up district by district now to see what better purposes they might serve. What a great form of surveillance. Failed experiment, but an instructive one. So are they fully organic or digitally integrated or both? Uh, it's the Hunger Games, they're both. Ooh. I mean, maybe I wouldn't be right next to the vent. Yeah, you got a whole lot of the space fan. to explore here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you should at least check that out over once, there. The one stabbing spot, maybe you don't want to be at. Oh, yeah, put the hanky in there. 
So they know her. And they love her. That's not a bad plan. It's like one little thing. Everyone's going to pass it around. Yeah. <laughs> Good McGuffin. Snakes are all going to pass that one little side for <laughs> I smelled this shit, man. I smelled, <laughs> smelled, oh, I smelled, smelled you before. I smelled, just smelled this shit. How much more heroin do I have? Oh, damn. What's wrong with Treach? Woo, boy. Oh, boy. Jesus. Oh, boy. No. Are uh, the snakes? Yeah, buddy. Snakes on a drone. Work. Did every snake get a chance with that hanky? Wobie. Wobie. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. What a way to go. Oh, 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 Jesus. Super snakes. They look, kind of look like uh, the candy. Yeah, like uh, the trolley. Uh, the s uh, creepy crawlers. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. Candy <laughs> snakes. It's not bad. It's not. I can't have killed them all for nothing. Wow. That's what the system will do to you. Ah! Creepy crawlers. And that is goodbye to Festus Creed. Have a nice summer. Now, all colors lead to gray. <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> He's proud of himself. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. It's a good one, Flickerman. <laughs> we worship you, O oh Greybeard. Oh, no, you're going to make her a martyr if you let her die, man. But before I can fly... I've Don't you go, she won. She it's won. over, let her out. Waller! Yeah. Why aren't they attacking her? Must be the singing. It's calming them. She can't sing forever. I'll catch you up when I've Oh, yeah. In the old air before. She has to sing with that accent, too. Whoa. I'll bring the new oh, whoa. Whoa. Oh. She's moving everyone, dude. Yeah. Flat on the floor. Woo! Go, girl. <laughs> Belt it. Is left anymore. Oh, damn. She's, she's, she's giving me goosebumps like twice, man. Oh, that shot. Uh -huh. Oh, this is like what legendary stories are made of. Yeah. Big sacrifices. I wonder if they sang, if she sang this like on set in camera, because it's like so performed through the emotion of her character. Get her out. Get her out. You're, you're going to make her a goddamn enemy. Call, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, dude. Make the call, call. Yeah. Get her out. There you Get go. Get her out. Get her out. Before Evil there was Katniss, there was Lucy Gray. Yeah. Get her out. <laughs> She's won! Lucy Gray! Her little snow is the winner of the 10th annual Hunger Games! <laughs> but Coriolanus still loses his mentorship competition. Yeah, there's still like an hour left of the movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else is there to do? <laughs> Uh, then he became an evil dictator. Yes. <laughs> Elect this man. <laughs> Let him lead us. Uh-oh. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Uh oh you cheated. Uh, yep. Cheating will be punished. Yep, yep, yep. Lucy Gray, where is she? I would be more concerned with your own survival if I were you. <laughs> we both know that child from Eleven didn't die of disease. And that yeah. old handkerchief. Oh, we found it in yeah. the snake tank, condemning you with your father's own initials. <laughs> yeah. So it, it was still in the tank? <laughs> uh, yeah. The handkerchief? <laughs> yeah. They must have just all passed it around. 
Or didn't you... get like swept away in any of that. <laughs> <laughs> they just left it right there at the bottom. <laughs> I've decided banishment to the districts where you'll serve your capital in exile for the next 20 years as an anonymous peacekeeping grunt. Damn, he's gonna make you a stormtrooper, dude. You hear that, boy? Finally. The sound of snow falling. Hey, it falls on top. Uh, yeah. Snow falls, falls on, on top. top. <laughs> Chapter three. Snow falls on top. Whoa. Ooh, buddy. Like a full on prisoner. Yeah. So James, what are you doing? What do you think? To what I did in the arena? My father had to buy the academy a brand new gym just so I could get my diploma. <laughs> Begged me to stay, but once I found out where they were sending you, I couldn't get out fast enough. <laughs> my man. I figure I get through basic and then maybe I become a medic. Make a real difference out here, just like you said. Aw, it's good to see you smile, man. I cheated to save Lucy Gray from the snakes. And I'd do it again. Do you think they killed her? She was a big hit. If there is a games next year, they're probably going to invite her to sing at the opening ceremony. Uh, She's going to love that. When the girl you risked everything for might be waiting for you at the end of this trap. Oh. My friend, don't give them the satisfaction. Your life has just begun. You're going to do great. She has a whole family now. <laughs> yeah. How does a guy like this climb back in power? I mean, he must wind up being some in some unique position to mediate between the furthest reaches of the rebellion and the innermost core of society. He must exploit something. Welcome to 12. For the next 20 years, <laughs> brothers and sisters and your immediate squad will become your family. You will train together, sleep together, eat together. You will rise together and you will fall together. Touch yourselves together. <laughs> And it will be your duty to report anything suspicious you see, because if you do not, you are as good as a rebel yourself. Burn Gorman. A peacekeeper and two mine bosses were shot oh, dead. That this man, all out chance, is guilty. <laughs> He's in his oh. Run, Luke! Run! Ah. Uh... 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 The birds are listening. Spy birds. Yeah. Jabber chase. What were you thinking back there? She didn't do anything. Corio, what is she guilty of? Being directly associated with rebels. If she had gotten through the crowd, I don't think I would have been able to shoot her. You need to find a way to make peace with our life here now. Whoa. Hobbs giving us all leave passes for the weekend. Boost morale. We're going to Hogsmeade. Yeah, they need a morale boost. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these guys. Clearly downtrodden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does make sense though like he would this whole experience has allowed him to get the most involved with understanding the full breadth of the whole society from to top how to, to bottom. govern well how to govern over yeah. it, yeah. how to wrangle and maintain oh there's music lucy Greyback could be here Uh, let's go. No one me on my Here we go. Get that new guitar. You need a bird. You need like a hummingbird or a dove. Like a there are a lot of bird themed guitars. I bet you never expected to lay eyes on me again. And let me tell you, that goes both ways. But I am back. Oh come on, y'all. You know I gave up drinking when I was twelve. I wonder if she's been brainwashed or like controlled by the capital in some way. Yeah. Yeah leveraged and or in, more likely leveraged than indoctrinated but yeah you can take my history you can take my part but his name's a mystery <laughs> oh nothing you can take she got a great voice god damn and all them blue I notes love, like every song she's been given yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once she's got to bring in that soulful, bluesy quality with, like, Broadway precision. Are these original songs? I don't know. If they yeah, are. I don't know. Like, they sound like they could be just, uh, like, you know, songs passed down. It's going to take 
I feel like the lyrics kind of suggest that it's a it's an original song like yeah. written recently, but it sounds like they could be about her. Or it could be about they could be about snow, like snow's perspective. Get that accordion, boy. Oh Jesus! I swore you wouldn't play with them again, Billy Toke. Yeah, oh Jesus! Oh, dude. <laughs> Save the accordion. Ow! Oh, that's the X. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, dude, yeah. Wow, oh, good shot. that close to her. This is really interesting. There's like three different movies in here. Yeah. Each act <laughs> yeah. is its own little movie. Yeah. Each chapter. It's really interesting. Around the hanging tree, swaying in the breeze. I love every kind of song she was given. Yeah. I still got one foot in the arena. God, how beautiful the country is. There. there is a bit of like a classic southern tale they tell with her. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking their rules, saving your life. But I gave them my last cent so that I could come here to 12 because I had to try to find you. Because I love you. I heard Dean, he told me the strangest thing. He said he was glad that I survived you. What? Ouch. I didn't have a choice. That little girl, too. I know. I thought it'd be one of the others, maybe hey, Coral. You are not a oh. killer, Lucy Gray. Yes, I am. Did what I had to do. You're safe. I don't trust anything around her. There are no bars preventing you now. Your peacekeeper friends. I'll handle this. Hey, they can't see us together. There's a lake out in the woods. Oh. Nobody knows much of it except us, Covey. Meet me here tomorrow. We'll go. It'll be our special place. It's a romantic drama between them. It's funny. It's, it would have been cool to see some of this perspective on her life in the earlier part of the story, but I get why you can't really put it there, but I feel like it might have been a good thing to do earlier on for her character. I figured you'd be a while, so I decided to explore town with Billy Tope. Who's the other guy with him? I remember that. Uh oh. The academy, watching uh -oh. me watch everyone. Oh. Carefully choosing when to weigh in. Are you trying to help these people? Don't you think they need help? They lost the war, Sejanus. A war they started that made your family rich. <laughs> Throw away any chance I might have of getting home someday just because you feel a bit guilty. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Turn coming. Then in an open field they cross. The marks were still the same. I wrote this song about me. Not ever lost into the breeze. Oh my god, they're in like casual garb. Footmarks one by one. Whew. The drone just hits him. <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden love. Ooh, red on black friend to Jack. I guess she just wasn't using him or something. I guess not. It's just an actual romance between them. Dude, I'm gonna get the soundtrack. Yes. It's great. I love that. I love the songs. Mocking Jays, we call them. Mocking Jays! Everyone cheered in the theater, oh, stood up and threw their that's popcorn. That's part one and that's part two. <laughs> I'm sure she's out there somewhere. She's a survivor, but it's a mystery, sweetheart, just like me. Whenever you look down in the sand and see one set of footprints, Lucy Gray was carrying you the whole time. Would you really go back, though, if you could, to the capital? Yeah. You have to. You have no idea. Ugh. But I hope you'll come back with me. Capital's not for me. At least it's civilized, has order. Well, the Hunger Games are order? Yeah, what cost? Well, of course not. What if this? Was our life, Coralinus? Not here. It's not Coralinus. It's Slim Shady. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a new name, all right. <laughs> it's a little early yet, Mount Ivory. Early for what? To eat the roots. Pretty little thing, but it's determined. You're determined. Oh, just like you. Some people call it swamp potato. I think Katniss has a much nicer ring, don't you? Katniss! Katniss! Everyone took out their guns and Katniss! fired into the theaters. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeehaw! laughs> 
Oh, uh, where where's the Everdeens now? Find an Everdeen. Yeah. <laughs> he misses Billy Tope. Do you? This right here? Eat up bread. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gale coming down. <laughs> <laughs> hey Mitch, could you pass me that? <laughs> you can trust me. I promise you that. If you can trust anyone in this world, you can trust me. No, those wide lenses. All right. Know. Maybe. I don't know. One of the best things about what's happening with this movie is I cannot, cannot predict tell. what is going to happen that leads to him becoming the snow that we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the one thing I, I can't. I was like, obviously, going to live, whatever, but I have no idea what it leads to. I received the results from your aptitude test this morning. Looked over your training records, too. Your performance is exemplary. Well, half the other recruits can't read, sir. Mm -hmm. You're General Crassus Snow's boy. Crassus. What did you do to end up here? I made an enemy, sir. I've made a career out of ruining my enemy's plans. I'm gonna help you, son. Yeah. I'm gonna reassign you to officer training in District 2. You'll earn no, no. a real wage. No, nope. Train leaves in 10 days. Keep a clean record. You'll never see anyone from District 12 again. As God intended. This is an honor, Private, not an option. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's that's actually a really good line. Yeah, totally. It's an honor, not an option. Yeah. It really speaks to the the tone of this society, especially. Where are you? Great, we're fine. Tigers, where are you? We're underground. We had to move out. We're renting this place just for right now. They evicted you. Of course they did. Grandmam's fine. I really don't want you to worry. I think I found a way out of here. I just have to make it through officer training in two, and then I can make my way back to the capital. I will fix this. Don't make me hope. What? Uh oh, who are you talking to? I think that girl who's caged. Oh yeah, from before. Oh. Them special birds. I saw you talking to that woman in the jail. If I don't report you now. You don't know anything to report. They know we're friends. You're gonna get us both killed. You told me. I could do something. You told me I could make a difference. Well, you're rebelling, though. You're not using your power. They're going up north to start a new life far away from Pan Am. They need money for supplies. They told me I could go if I got it for them. Oh, you could God. come with us. You're giving money to the locals. Do not record this dog. They're not planning on doing anything dangerous, okay? It's all dangerous. They're just doing what anybody else would do, Corey. The leader, Spruce, he wants to get his sister Lil out of jail on base. Hoff is going to execute her just because she knows the man that they killed. Dude, you're totally betraying him. What if they catch you bringing this woman off base? It's worth the risk to do the right thing for you. It's never worth the risk. <laughs> <laughs> Play the long game and don't get anything done in the process. <laughs> don't make me rescue you again. I don't need you to rescue me, Corio. Boy. Damn, dude. Now just leave the recording on for the whole transport process. <laughs> just like max out the memory on this poor bird. They're just doing what anybody else would do, Corey. The leader, Spruce, he wants to get his sister what? Will out of jail. On do you like trim it down or is he just going to send it as is? He didn't do anything wrong. Well, yeah, and she knows about him going in already. She suggested that, so I guess he's fine. But it's these kind of acts that would make her not trust him and not want to be with him. Lucy Gray? Yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, this is going to drive them apart <laughs> completely. Oh, oh, she's singing to you? Shit. That's my girl up there. Uh, she's singing about me. That's my, my woman talking about me up there now. <laughs> I'm like, now part of District 12. <laughs> Just let me get one last look at you. <laughs> <laughs> a snow is born. <laughs> what are you doing? Guns, Sejanus? I didn't know there was going to be weapons, Corio. They lied to me. You thought they'd be honest? Are you crazy? There are peacekeepers right out there. There's another one in here now, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's okay, Spruce. He's with me. I, he, I, I told him to come in here. He's going to... Oh. Hey, wait. Don't be weird. She's okay, Spruce. She's joining us, too. She's with me. She what? Quiet down, Mayfair. I'll explain later. It's my ex. I'm trying to get her back, man. Yeah. <laughs> she become my rebound. <laughs> yeah. Making me look stupid. What do you think, Lucy Gray? Mild top, no action. Hey, how'd you enjoy the capital, by the way? What did you do? See y'all 
<laughs> Whoa, yeah, buddy. Oh, oh my shit. God. Oh. Yeah. Hell's breaking loose now. What did you just do? Well, you just shot the mayor's daughter, son. What did you just do? You weren't a rebel before. You are now. You killed her. God Friggin damn. Billy Took me some knee, maybe. I said pop down. You caught a surprise coming, Capital Boy. If I'm gonna swing for this, you swing with me. Oh, no, dude. Oh, shit. Wow. It's the departed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. You're gonna go back out on that stage and you're gonna sing. You're gonna get your goddamn shit together, woman. <laughs> yeah, my hand never shakes. <laughs> you're gonna sing like nothing is wrong, and I'm gonna find us a way out of this, okay? Okay? I swear, I swear, I swear. Get rid of these guns. Now he's gotta clean up this mess. If you breathe a word now, both of us, we're finished. So we go back out there and we act like nothing is wrong. You have to pull it together. You came here for me, right? We're brothers. Ooh. So whatever you've done, I swear, I will keep you safe. Wow, he's making a promise that he knows he's not going to be able to keep up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those guns were the only loose end besides the four of us. So we're going to be okay. Not a word. Okay? okay? <laughs> At the end of the day, he's only going to look out for himself. It's like that mentorship slingshotted him into just being a manipulator and a plotter. Hoff is losing his mind. The mayor's daughter got shot and her boyfriend, too. He's sending out every grunt. We've got to find the guns that did it. Ooh. My palms are sweaty. Knees <laughs> are heavy. <laughs> on my uniform yeah. already. We shall find their murder weapons. If the killers are still in Panem's grasp, they will hang before the week is out. Oh, boy. You okay? The mayor's going to get me killed. Gordon Lewis. He already thinks it was me. Billy Tope, Mayfair are both dead. If they get Spruce now, or Sejanus talks. Sejanus won't talk. How do you know that? Trust me, he won't. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I should have dealt with those guns myself. I have straight. to run north. Like Billy Tope and the others talked about. If I stay here now, I'm as good as dead. What about the covey? They can look after each other. Yeah. I just wanted to say goodbye. Be targets without me. I'll come with you. I just learned Hoff is sending me to two for officer training, but none of that matters now. You were going to leave. It's all Pan Am. As soon as they find that gun, they'll hang me, no matter which district I'm in. Hmm. I think we got one! Three years, I fought for the capital during the war. Oh, he's gonna let someone else take it. This is the first time I've felt ashamed. No. Oh. Get the other one up here! Yeah, it's a big old gap there. The capital has received word via Jabba Jade that these two men conspired to break into our basis jail and flee north. Oh, you messed up, dude. I God. expect this of a rebel, Damn. but not from one of our own. This is treason. Does he know who that's? Who's his son is? The leader, Spruce. He wants to get his sister Lil out of jail on base. Oh, that is bad. No, no, no! Oh wow, they played it. <sighs> but they didn't, they didn't play his audio part of the audio. I feel like everything post the Hunger Games of this has been the most interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the part this that's is breathing the, the most. And also, like, doing something completely different from the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Dude, you, like, straight up betrayed him. Though. Yeah, dude, this is all on you. This man is, like, master at sneaking. I know. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of dudes around. Come into the tree where the dead man. I love the songs in this movie. <laughs> they are all so good. And they've they've naturally found a way to like weave them through the whole thing. Yeah. And it's like not quite a musical, but still kind of because like it's yeah, it's such a strong element. There's emotion to it, man. There's movement. It's like completely rooted in the story and it creates a tone to the film. Yeah, it's rooted in her emotion. Sure will be nice not to have to kill anyone else up north though, huh? Three's enough for me. Dude, why that phrase? Who's the third? What? The person you killed, Corey Lanus. He said you killed three people. I only know about two. Do not lie to me. Oh, yeah. My old self. I killed him so I could come with you. Clever. Yeah, speak poetic. You don't buy it though. Very clever, man. We're gonna need food. Let's catch some fish uh, while we're here. Storm clouds gathering over your relationship. If you want to fish, there's rods under the floorboards. I brought you this delicious bass. Yeah, yeah, break you guys. There's, I like, I, I like them both individually. There is a lack of like romantic chemistry with them though. Yeah. 
it's like fine. It's like passing grade, you know. Yeah. But no, early, I feel like this know. has to be a compelling. <laughs> yeah. You gotta like yeah. love the romance enough that it's gonna be completely heartbreaking when the inevitable happens. The one you fired at Mayfair. Spruce must have known about this place. If we destroy that gun, you're free. You can go back home. No more. Ugh. Besides me. Ugh. You wouldn't tell anyone. Of course not. Songbirds are for singing. I'm just gonna go dig up some catnips. Yeah. yeah it's 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 down by the lake. Thought it was too early for that. Well, the world changes awful fast. Oh, <laughs> that grin. It's still raining. Well, I'm not made out of sugar. <laughs> I love that this became an Evil Dead movie right now. Stone was in there with the guns. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. <laughs> yeah, he's running in there. <laughs> Come, you'll see. Mama scarf. I do like the trajectory. Oh, oh my oh, God! Wow! Damn. Is that poisonous? <laughs> I said, are you trying to kill me? After everything I've done for you. He did do a lot for you. It's turning into like a tense domestic, domestic thriller. thriller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the movies do something really interesting where he starts off as like, you know, that pompous, arrogant first yeah. class. And then the more he becomes like the dark villain, the more human he actually seems. Yeah, <laughs> and watch him and flirt with the different <laughs> ideologies until finally we get here. But he seems like more like a guy now yeah. Yeah, than totally. he did at the beginning. Even though he's worse. Yeah. He's like it's becoming like full, a villain. Wow, what a shot. Went right for it. Wow. Uh-oh. Something to remember you by. That's enough. Lucy Gray, I said. Oh. Birds whistling along. Oh, is it recording? I don't know. I guess it must be. Oh. That's what I spend my time doing in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Damn bird! He's gotta shoot the birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's like the saturation tone down there. Then Jason comes up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the only thing we haven't done with Friday the 13th yet. <laughs> Jason gets a gun. <laughs> Gummy berry juice. I mean, he got rid of the loose ends of the guns, but he would need to kill her. Yeah, especially now. How's the arm, Private? The medic said you took quite a bite. Nothing that I won't have forgotten about by the time I reached two. There's been a change of plan, Private Snow. What? We're creating a special district and putting you in it. It's 15. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Snow. You've passed all my tests. So you'll be studying under me now at the Capital University. What was the rest of the test? I can't afford university. A certain Mr. Strabo Plinth has offered to pay for everything you need while you're there. Wow. All for being such a good friend to his Sejanus. He doesn't know Whoa. quite how good a friend you were, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, you sent your only friend to the noose just to get Impressive. my attention. That's not what I did. Are you sure? Because I think that won you the plinth prize after all. Wow. Whoa, what a curse. <laughs> President has agreed to another year of the games. People watched. <laughs> we got picked up. But before I take you under my uh. wing, after everything you've seen out there in the real world, let me ask you one final time. What are the Hunger Games about? What are the Hunger Games for? I used to think that the Hunger Games were punishment for the district. Then I thought they served as a warning to us here in the capital mm. about the threat the districts posed. A little bit of each. Now I know the whole world is an arena, and we need the Hunger Why? Games to remind us all who we truly are. We need the annual purge. <laughs> Who are you? Do you determine? The victor. Welcome home, Mr. Snow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the world is the Hunger Games. 
You look just like your father, Coriolanus. In the end, he became his father. And we know what she thinks of his father. We know. Mm -hmm. She wasn't talking about the clothes he was wearing. She's talking about the hate in his eyes. Yeah, your twisted soul. (laughs) Wake up. Sejanus Plint's personal effects from District 12. Blech. I was going to return this to his parents tonight as a gift. It would have been his 19th birthday. But I think they would prefer just this. Ha. Jesus. Best friends. Forever. You grew a heart in the districts. No, not in the districts. In the Hunger Games. I should be thanking you. Credit for the Hunger Games goes to your father. Half of it, at least. I only dreamt them up as an assignment. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, my God. I was drunk. Devise a punishment for our enemies so extreme, they will never forget how badly they wronged us. No one could actually agree. When I sobered up, I wanted it destroyed, but your father, my best friend, stole it from me. Wow, damn. Put both our names on it, taking it to Gaul to rise up himself. (laughs) She put it in a snake tank. (laughs) I hope the games might die out. I tried to stop them however I could, but then you came along. Now the blood of so many more generations will be on my hands. Yeah. My contacts inform me that she's disappeared, that the mayor might have killed her out there, but there's no proof. It's Mm. a mystery. She is a mystery. Her daddy's name. Look at you, heir Mm. to the plinth fortune. Nothing in your way. Snow lands on top. (laughs) Goddamn right. Gotta respect the game. Yeah, that's true. Respect the game. Don't knock the hustle. Oh, no. Peter Dinklage, man. He did seem like he wanted it, though, from the very beginning. We're like, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Surrender. Find your peace. Oh. That was a good effect, actually. The way they made him go, like, cold and purple and bruised around the eyes. Yeah. That's really good. His color fading from his face. Snowfall! Ah! Symbolism. He's changed the entire weather pattern of the capital. Soon this fountain will be covered in ice. And a rainbow of destruction. Perf. It's the things we love most. Who destroys us? Oh. <laughs> Look out. And you love Lucy Gray. The theme. Awesome. We did it. We made it. Wow. All right, Reject Nation. So today I want to share something with you that has been a wonderful addition to my health and fitness journey that I discovered during the holidays, and that is Liquid IV's hydration multiplier. I'm down to my very last packet, and I'm freaking out, but it's okay. I got more in the mail. Now, a lot of you have been so kind to notice how I've been working on my physical health. Thank you for all the compliments. And one thing I learned is that proper hydration is absolutely crucial, especially post-workout and pre-filming after post-workout. And my wife actually introduced me to this product, which is perfect because we not only care about quality, but a good taste and quality product. Whether it's after a sweaty workout or just after, you know, a good night out, you know what I'm saying? Efficient hydration and replenishing electrolytes is key. You just feel better and it tastes fantastic. I can't emphasize that enough. Another thing that I'm always on the lookout for too is products that have zero sugar or zero sugar added because that's one of my main dietary restrictions throughout the week. And they of course got products that fit that description that also taste good too. So yes, thank you so much. So Liquid IV's hydration multiplier is in summary is they are a non-GMO electrolyte drink that delivers hydration into your bloodstream faster and more efficient than water alone. Because sometimes drinking a whole gallon is not always efficient, but in fact, it can provide the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. I'm also big on efficiency. Plus, it's packed with 11 essential vitamins, and we know vitamins are good for the body. It's vegan, soy-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. You can customize the water amount to your taste. Again, perfect for post-night recovery, traveling, or just having a big night out. You know what I mean? No, I won't. So, if you want to boost your support for the channel and boost your hydration game, go to liquidiv.com and use promo code REJECTS at checkout. That's liquidiv.com, promo code REJECTS. And remember, Liquid IV, it's not a real IV, but it sure feels like it. So stay hydrated, stay healthy, and let's keep crushing those health and fitness goals together in the year 2024. All righty, well, well, Reject Nation, uh, if you listen to us on Apple or Spotify, we just literally moments ago finished watching Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds, and, and Snakes. snakes. <sighs> <sighs> 
All righty. Well, um, before going into it, my expectations were they were tamper well. Like there was a good trailer, and then there were not great reviews, mixed reviews, I would say. <laughs> but then a really good audience score, and then the box office ended up picking up on it. So mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, this sets my expectations, I feel like. That's all I really knew. I didn't watch any reviews, so I didn't know what people thought about anything in particular. Uh, and then I just was able to take this one out. Now, just a little reminder, like, I've only... I think I might have seen the first one twice. I think I saw the first one twice. Yeah, yeah, I definitely saw the first one twice. And then I saw uh, the other ones just one time. And uh, I really loved the first two a lot, I remember. Uh, really loving them. Yeah. This, this isn't going to be really a comparison uh, yeah. to them. Uh, there's no real point in doing that. Uh, but there were there's a lot about this movie that I really, really liked. Uh, quite, quite a bit. And there are some things that I'm like, ah, I feel like maybe they were maybe two and a half hours is actually not enough to tell this <laughs> epic spanning tale that they want to tell. And then it seems like it even ends at a point where they would they could still do a sequel. Yeah. To the 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 rise of snow. I think you know? they were smart enough to go, we'll just try this one movie that we jam packed out. And then if people like that, then we'll do our Coriolanus Snow trilogy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of announcing it ahead of time. I mean, but what did you, what, what are your what's the first thing that comes to mind for you, John? Oh goodness! I mean, I guess Rachel Zegler is the first thing that comes to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed this too, uh, in, in an interesting way. Because yeah, like the Hunger Games franchise for me. You know, I, I like I, I probably had the same experience now that I think about it. Like I might have seen Catching Fire or the first one again at home, you know, on home video at some point. But I feel like I, the first one was a pretty vivid experience when it was out. The second one, like I'll never forget the IMAX experience of that. Yeah. And then the 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 returns, you know, kind of diminished across the Mockingjays. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I, I came in kind of in a, in a middle space, you know, sort of being like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to go back to this world. I'm not expecting the moon. And I've heard enough mixed opinions some people really positive some people kind of meh that i was like yeah this this is a fun prospect to me because it could go any number of directions and it sounds like they're at least trying something and uh and yeah like uh, it's interesting because those two performances at the center of the movie are so much of you know what makes it compelling i mean like the 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 world and the way that talking about snow and lucy gray (laughs) yeah, <laughs> Lucy Gray Baird. Uh, you know, those two come. I, I, I agree when you say that this could have been longer just because I feel like we really see from the perspective of Snow, we really get to know Snow. And I wish we could have maybe done that for Lucy Gray as well because Rachel Zegler does have this fascinating presence in the movie as it is presented because she is kind of like a bird flying through everything. Uh, because she's removed from everything. Like, she comes from these people who exist outside of and sort of in between the different districts. And then you have the district setup that we know about. But we're largely seeing from the perspective of somebody who is from that upper crust and who, you know, has, even if he's got, you know, uh, shambled origins, has certainly arisen to, you know, the kind of the heights of privilege and whatever else in this society. And so, like, when they first meet and she enters the plot, like, she is so such a presence and such a force, but I feel like they're, it's like the, the problem is we need our own like Katniss Everdeen style movie to show her life outside of this too. Cause like the way she enters the movie, she does have this kind of like magic presence. Cause you know, she's going to teach him, but she's also got to survive the hunger games, but she also just has this just sort of effervescent wiseness in, in all situations that sort of places her, I don't know, yeah, just sort of in this interesting plane above it all, while still very much entrenched in it all. So yeah, I feel like some of the character things could have benefited from the kind of breathing room the third chapter gets, which I'm glad they put it there because it's what you're going to leave people off, you know, it's the last taste you're going to leave in their mouth, and it's certainly sort of a very tangible uh, sequence. Uh, that part of the story and you do get more of that sense of like the life that this girl comes from and and the way he looks at that and all those interesting things but but the performances i thought were really terrific the performances were i thought everyone was great in this movie yeah even to even Violet Davis, who usually can't do anything <laughs> wrong with me she's the only one i was questionable about did she did she for sure know 
the, 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 world, the tone of uh, like, yes, there are hidden characters in Hunger Games for sure, but there's kind of like a time and a place for where they are placed. She's not doing and like hoity toity heightened. She's, she's doing like. She's out of something else. In yeah, she's doing yeah, like a whole other. Yeah. She reminded me of Charlie's there in Snow White and the Huntsman, where she's just like way elevated and chewing scenery in a way most other characters are not. Yeah. <laughs> but I found it very amusing. Like, she was very entertaining and she had her scenes where she was effective. Yeah. Uh, I, I like, I think. For me, you know, while we're on this subject of all of them, yeah, I, I think the individual performances of both of them are really good. Who plays Snow? Yeah, what is that guy's name? I'm never, I don't know if I've seen this guy before. Probably have. He's one of those guys, probably. Where I'm like, oh, yeah, I have. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't remember. Has he done a Game of Thrones or something? I don't know this guy's name. Yeah. Tom Blythe? Tom Blythe. That name sounds familiar. Does he maybe get, like thrown out there for lots of things. No, I haven't seen any of these guys done, actually. Yeah. Looking at looking at his list of stuff, I haven't seen any of this. Yeah, damn, first time. This is the first time for us. Yeah. First time for us. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought that he did a really good job, and I thought she did a really good job, and I think, like, the missing piece for me between the two of them uh, really was just, and a lot of it comes down to the writing, the breathing within your first, because um, there's three parts to here. Yeah. So three long acts is what they're doing. And I, and I think, like, in the first act especially, they really could have utilized building that relationship up yeah. with them. Uh, it's more about, like, the qualitative treatment that you give them with the sparse time they are allowed to see each other. You know, and then they're talking about, like, oh, a mentor-mentee uh, dynamic, and, and they don't really... I don't, I don't feel like we really did enough with that. I, that was the part where I felt yeah. like they were really missing they something. Like rushed that. When it seemed like that would have been your most compelling story to element to build the relationship between the two of them because they want to do two things right they want to tell the story of, of the origin of snow but also the origin of how the hunger games came to be i think the one thing i was misled by and i kind of blame the trailer i think the trailer makes it feel this way that this was going to be the first hunger games yeah i thought right. i thought this would be the first that was the impression i was left with sure it was oh we're gonna watch the story of the very first hunger Games. yeah and what did that look like <laughs> yeah i didn't realize we'd be 10 years in yeah. we still get the origin of how it came to be and and how it even co correlates more with snow ha -ha. In, in a way that was uh, pretty surprising. And it, like that reveal at the end of... He uh, is a special. Yeah. <laughs> your daddy it's created the these games, Your boy. father was Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> you are monarch, son. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there was, there was a, a, a nice little treatment there. Uh, but I, I do think that what they did miss out on was really capturing that to heighten everything tension stakes the that prequel fear syndrome where you're like oh, i know he's gonna be bad but i don't want him to be you, you, you have to like tug at that you know and that's where i thought some of the qual worse where some of the emotional heft was missing some of its zest yeah oh, good work. personally that's just my personal take and it's kind of odd to say that when the individual performances themselves like isolator i thought were really good rachel zegler especially i thought was a scene stealer and and i, I know you keep I, I understand your perspective there of wanting to see a little bit more from rachel zegler's pov but i i, I this choice to p p keep it this whole thing feels like it's in, entirely in snow's perspective even when you yeah. cut to rachel zegler in the arena or hiding out i'm like well there's cameras on there that he could be watching you know, yeah. so it's still his perspective. So, like, even choices like that make sense to me. I don't, I can't recall a scene in here where you actually cut away from a scene that he is not either privy to, or uh, like he has to be in the room in some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and honestly, I don't begrudge the movie. I understand that the structure they've chosen necessitates that, and I don't think that's the only way to do it. I feel like, yeah, if the first act. And by extension, the second, but like one thing, the later games, the earlier movies do, which I get is not fully formed yet. That's part of the point of these. But, you know, you spend a distinct amount of time with the mentors, you know, so like and, and they become distinct characters. And so I like the idea of them being thrown together and them essentially like meeting as she's getting off the train, then being thrown into this truck and then being thrown into the zoo. And, and I feel like if we could have stolen a few more moments to it's weird. It's like there are a lot of things about it that necessitate that quickness of pace and we're rushing into this and there's not really much time anyway. But it would have been nice, I think, to have a couple of scenes that just made it so that we maybe didn't have to spend so much time wondering if she is 
you know, being straight with how she's expressing herself. Because there are certain times, and and I and I think there's a certain amount of time you're supposed to be wondering, oh, are they both playing the game? Um, and and you know, seeing from his, it's weird. Yeah, it's 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 good. I like. I think they've given us a good amount of like kind of rich stuff there. But yeah, like some more intimate beats early on that breathe a little, that allow them to establish the chemistry and allow us to care just about them being together beyond all of this. Well, the the issue I think with the movie is, is another case. Even though it's a long movie, uh, I mean nowadays it feels like the standard for films are like two and a half or three hours. And I think this should have been three hours because unlike the other Hunger Games movies, specifically referencing the first two, mm. those first two that feet like Mockingjay does not have a Hunger Game in it. Those first two movies have a Hunger Game in it. And the structure with that is introduce characters, lead into the Hunger Games, the fun ceremony stuff and whatever. And then you're in the Hunger Games and there's like a, a five to ten minute wrap up at the end. Yeah. <laughs> those are both those movies. Yeah. You know, and then here. You do it all that, and then another and hour, a whole other <laughs> movie on the other. Yeah. This yeah, is so. the rare so. time because people used to roll their eyes about the whole like, oh, split the last one into two. But I'm like, you could split this in two and really stack up all the because all those happen to favor one side or the other. There's always one half that's a little more action packed. There's always one half that's yeah. a little more emotional, a little more story and stakes. And so like, I feel like here you could have had your thrilling first installment of like, oh man, we're getting to see the both of them. We're getting to see him learning how this world works and his place in it and the moral implications of all that plus them just bonding over getting through this hunger game and then the next side okay yeah. they're free they're back in the district they're about to gear this up again you know will he you know we know where he's headed but then you well, can spend that movie going oh will they remain you know together yeah because i didn't even feel I, I don't really care for um i'm not one of those people who really thinks that a movie needs to do commentary <laughs> I do think that when you are, I'd rather just get a character-driven narrative, honestly, more than anything else, and then let some commentary speak via through that, and which is how I think commentary generally should be that's, executed. It's called it's subtext. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Because there's a lot of textual yeah. talk in here. Yeah. Whereas uh, here, I'm like, the commentary doesn't really do anything that new yes. for the Hunger Games world. Uh, it, not really. Like everything that they touch on with uh, oppression, classism, and, and uh, war, all that people as animals, and yeah, yeah like it, prisoners. The, the the way they've d explored all these other things, yeah, we've seen all that. And and honestly, that's the thing with Francis Lawrence, who I feel like is on the uh, unlike unlike David Yates, because David. Okay, for those who don't know, <laughs> David Yates made Order of Phoenix. I think that was his first one. Yeah, and then he just and made every Harry every Potter wizard, and every Fantastic Beast, and he didn't take a break to do anything else. Yeah. Whereas Francis Lawrence has at least done stuff since the last Hunger Games movie, sure. and, then, and then this one, right? But at the same time, it is like I feel like we kind of needed a fresh director <laughs> to. I do to, feel like because the first two acts, while not bad and i don't think they're bad i don't feel like they're anywhere near as interesting as the last act because there is a certain element of kind of going by the numbers yeah while they do some different things even like the new stuff that they're introducing kind of feels like yeah this is about the beats you expect them to hit with the origin of snow and this <laughs> early hunger games story it it does feel a little bit like in terms of outlining and, that, and that's where the richness would come in with just stronger scene work yeah. uh, or or really be like even not being like, I don't even really care about that stuff being like uh, the outline being a little bit what I expected. It's yeah. the, but the scenes themselves really shine. Yeah. And and so that's where predictability versus, uh, you know, actual storytelling. <laughs> and, and to me, I'm like, yeah, it was kind of weaving in and out uh, for me of being really connected, whereas like the third Part three of, of this post the Hunger Games is when I felt like Francis Lawrence finally like lit up. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, I get to bring yeah. some of that stuff I've probably been raking in from more recent experiences and apply it to this. Yeah, yeah. I get to do something different because to the movie's credit, one of the best things about and, and, and I keep forgetting it's actually based on a this one's based on a book. Keep forgetting that, but to the story of it is there's been a lot of origin tales of people that just seem unnecessary or I don't, I don't really like that word necessary. You know when people say that, like, is this movie no necessary? film is yeah, necessary. Like, yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't really like that word necessary. Um, yeah. That the, the origins feel 
it's so predictable. The origins feel like, well, we know we're going to go here. We know where this is going to happen. We know. And and the only thing we really, that was A, uh, obvious is that he's got to end up a bad guy by the end. Yeah. And B, um, it probably has something to do with the heartbreak here that he yeah. experienced with this woman. But the way that unfolds, while some stuff you can sort of telegraph like a, like several minutes before it happens, for the most part, I really was like, I don't know how he's going to end up yeah. to being the snow or, or at least end up on the path of being the snow that we know him to be by the time he becomes Donald Sutherland. Yeah. And I thought that was a strength that kept me watching because yeah. I was because I could not see it really i'm like i don't really know and by the time we got there it actually really clicked for me it, i thought it was great on how they did it because they took avenues primarily in the part three act they took avenues and directions that kind of let plot points unfold in ways that don't actually feel cliche and i don't think they are cliche they took different directions that i thought were actually really unexpected of why he does what he does or how he lands where he lands, where he does come to the lesson of the world is not, the Hunger Games are merely a mirror, you yeah. know? And I thought that was kind of powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was great. It's a distillation and, of everything that's going on all over this place. Because we isolate the Hunger Games, but they are a reflection of us yeah. in, in, a, in a way, right? And I, so I actually really, like the third act really bumped this up a lot for yeah. me whereas the first two acts were i i'm i'm picking and choosing what i really like well the you first know? two acts of that blockbuster thing that happens where you have like a bunch of talent and not enough you know time to really let that spread out yeah and, and i mean like, even the hunger game himself was like this yeah it's a little it's kind it, honestly it's, it's a weird word to say a part of it feels like it's kind of cute to me <laughs> uh, oh, oh yeah it's like an older version oh yeah look at that it's the older version that's how a lot of it was sort of reading yeah instead of really having the suspense and stakes and the menace people find the the most violent shit that happens is someone people fall you know like and i thought oh we're in a more like barbaric setting where usually we're in this like giant landscape yeah and i and 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 i and i thought it actually d completely didn't have the <laughs> not i want to say completely it was void of the grit that the other ones had even especially the first movie's grit like yeah. the first movie i remember not knowing what i was gonna go watch and sure there might have been like the shock value of it of someone who had no idea what the Hunger Games was about, and be like, "These kids are murderers!" <laughs> you know? Like, but see, but it was still captured in a way that I remember being like, "This is really violent." These are like kids, like the way it was being shot. Even though it's PG thirteen, the humanity yeah. of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like really it personally. On, yeah, it borders on R, and 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 this I thought really should have towed the line, and it the Hunger Games themselves were like, yeah. They're, that's fine. <laughs> th that's that's the thing about so much of the first two chapters of this, and why I do honestly think that if any of these should have been split in two, this would be a good candidate because that's the thing is I yeah it's like. I think it's a neat idea of doing like, okay, so it's like the 10th one. We've done a couple of these enough to know that it's not going to be like completely makeshift. But yeah, it's not what you are used to in the future. That's a cool prospect because you can play up the humor like with the drones. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the half that they are missing is the way in which that's totally more barbaric or it would lead to a games that is a lot more feral and scrappy. Exactly. And, and like that. There are glimpses of that, like the weapons do like harken back to like old gladiator stuff. And, you know, it's not super high tech, but it's I feel so like surface, though, it, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And and so you have these cartoon, you know, all the other competitors fall into their cartoon, you know, archetypes. And you have like a literal puppy killing with the one girl with the tuberculosis and the one guy over here who's just like, you know, yeah. the, the chosen hero and everyone in between. And, the problem with the runtime is that you, you're now shortened like the other two movies that's a, most of the runtime is the, it's the game and here you're like we got to condense that runtime <laughs> because yeah see again not to I, I guess i'm just gonna embrace that these are the ideas the movie is giving me not to like totally rewrite but i feel like it's good to keep it in snow's perspective i i like what they tried to do with the hunger games i feel like you could have done a lot with the tension 
like you could show her perspective in the games a, a, to a greater emotional degree and and ride off the simultaneous nature of the fact that he's in one place around the establishment watching her and can only do so much to help and she's you know literally stranded in Lord of the Flies right now so like there's so much mutual tension and cutting back and forth yeah. and stuff that you could do in the moment to really make that gripping. And and again, like one thing those old Hunger Games movies did do was at least take some time to like, okay, we're meeting all the other contestants in, they get their intros in front of the city, but then we do like the behind the scenes, like, oh, this is what they're really like. And this is, you know, who I'm up against and who might be an ally. And you get to wonder about all these things a little, whereas this is moving so quickly that it, it just doesn't give you time for mystery or wondering much of anything that isn't yeah. clearly going to be end of the movie reveals and, and that's where i think to your point of where some of the stuff of because we're focused on snow snow's perspective not um uh lucy's perspective yeah, yeah. where lucy gray, lucy gray <laughs> whereas the movies are focused on katniss's perspective who is in the hunger games yeah so you you're more connected to it you're more you're more connected to the entire thing and, and so i think the idea was to kind of flip perspective but it was trying to have its cake and eat it too a little bit, yeah. you know, and and I think that's where some of it, and because of the fact that it's this number installment movie, you know, the only people who are going to watch, I don't know, most people who are going to watch this, this is going to be the fourth Hunger Games movie they're watching. Yeah. No, the fifth. This is going to be the fifth Hunger Games movie because there's the Hamaki J's two parts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this will be the fifth Hunger Games movie they're watching. And not uh, their first one. So it you moves naturally will. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. And that's it the does. thing. There's an awareness to it. So, Cause, yeah. Because, yeah, I think, too, it's like it rushes pretty quickly past them, their initial distrust, and the spirit they suggest upon their first meeting just doesn't seem like someone who would warm up to him that fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like they needed to earn moments like that. And, yeah, that's, you can do a lot of things still within his perspective, but the, develop that. That's what made him, uh, that's what made me, like, question her. Yeah. But, Back to her. I mean, I think that her uh, Rachel Zegler again. I feel like that it's become like this hot button keyword <laughs> to talk about her. Um, I don't really care. I mean, I th I, I thought she was uh, the absolute standout in this movie. Mm -hmm. I came in here to watch the origin of the Hunger Games and the origin of our favorite dictator. <laughs> and Rachel Zegler, I I forgot she was in it till a moment before they showed her. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, Rachel Zegler's in this movie. Yeah. I was not expecting her character to be such a standout. Her the songs that they I don't know if they wrote those songs. I don't know if they're uh, at a, um, covers. I don't know what. Regardless, I thought they helped serve the narrative and help develop her character and her voice and the mood and uh, how it creates an atmosphere around her. And it's something that I think could have really failed at how they executed it to be in here is just something that feels completely cheesy and silly. Uh, yet you can see how that is also the start and origin of uh, of, of something theatrical to endear you to the audience yeah. uh, in terms of like in the Hunger Games world of how they do that, the theatrics to make them a little bit more performers who are tributes. The tributes make them more performers. And and uh, but but her performance overall, like I was most concerned about her. Like I did. She was the only one huh. where I was like, ooh, I, I don't want her to die. And the stakes yeah. are really real for for you because you're in District 12 at the moment and you're also, you know, part of a traveling group of people yeah. who seems to be on the fringes of society anyway. And and I like that they use the music. Like, the music does, I think, a good amount to bridge some of the gaps because music does just speak in ways that words don't always. And, and a lot of the lyrics kind of are directly about situations that happen. But I feel like, you know, the, the emotional rousing that music can provide is put to good effect here. And I like that it also plays into the tradition of like, yeah, in rebellions, music plays a big part, both for morale and for this sending of messages and other things like that. And yeah. so like, that's a nice astute detail to put in there. That's perfectly in line to do what often happens in, in earlier hunger games installments where it's like, okay, this is technically a rebellion, but you can warp it into being part of the show too. You know, the, the one is part of the matrix, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, like that was, like a cool thread that they didn't have to commit to to the degree that they did. And I thought that was like a nice artistic surprise they put on this. It was a really nice artistic surprise. Yeah. And I like the Descent of Snow where he, he – normally in these movies where someone becomes a monster, you just watch them become less human and more cold by the end. And I thought the choice to actually – 
do do kind of an inverse where he actually seems more detached, honestly, in the beginning to, in the be, in the very very beginning of the movie. Yeah. He seems a little bit more attached, and, and I get it. His family was once of prominence, and he's putting on sort of this like posturing act of elegance that even Peter Dinklage calls him out on. Yeah, and then so then you're slowly getting to see like oh he's actually a, but some of his earlier on scenes. I didn't really. I feel like he was cast for what he did in the later half, sure, and not so much what he did in the first half. Yeah, and in that first half, um, yeah, because I, I think his real strengths were in that last half, and in that first half of the movie, you you are watching as he's becoming more human, right, from falling in love to the fear and paranoia, even when he starts doing villainous deeds or corrupted deeds that are out of just selfish gain, it. Where he's playing his own real world Hunger Games, like as someone yeah. who was a mentor and he's playing real world Hunger Games, he actually feels like he's becoming more and more human as he becomes quote unquote a monster, I guess you know. And I, and I thought that was actually a nice way of doing an origin for like, oh look at him, he's a good guy, and we're gonna watch him become bad. And they did it in a way that was different. It didn't feel like he completely became. Sometimes in origin movies, they they really telegraph very early on that this is who they uh, like. Oh, you're gonna see them become bad. And hey, here it is, that right streak here. was always yeah, in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that, or they. Uh, I, I don't know. There's there's all other kinds of versions of cliches, and I haven't quite seen it done this way. Like when he's in the woods trying to shoot her, he, he still feels like a very multi layered human in that moment, who is experiencing paranoia, heartbreak, fear of loss. Wanting to, like I thought he embodied the multiple layers and he felt that's what I'm trying to say. I felt like he actually became multi-layered and multifaceted um, at the, as the movie went and by, especially by the end. And that's yeah. why I feel like he's more human by the end, even though he's more cold. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the beginning, I <laughs> didn't really feel the multiple layers of this character. It took me a while to get actually interested in who Snow, uh, in this version of Snow. It, it really took me some time. Uh, like Rachel Zegler was kind of right off the bat. Whereas um, her, uh, him, took me some time. And then the other performers, too, of course, like uh, Peter Dinklage was, you know, he, he, Peter Dinklage was kind of doing something we were familiar with Peter Dinklage doing, but it, it's still like, he's still committed. It's still Peter Dinklage. <laughs> he's still yeah. great. Yeah, he's still great. He's still doing a performance. And Jason Schwartzman, as uh, I just call him <laughs> Young Stanley Tucci, I always forget that character's name. Lucky Flickerman or whatever. I, I liked how, you know, the comparison difference is Stanley Tucci is, is very much, he's a superstar, you know. Um, He's Regis Philbin, and then this is young Regis Philbin. You know, <laughs> he's working his way up. Yeah, he's yeah. holding the show together, but yeah. he's also singing for his dinner. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I thought Jesus Schwartzman was excellent, and yeah, I think performances, costumes, all look great, and the aesthetic of making it like retro sci-fi, where it feels like how the '50s and '60s imagined what the future would look like. Mm. Uh, so I thought that was really cool, and. And yeah, the third act to me was um, that that's when I felt this movie really sang a lot and, yeah. and had the most amount of actual tension to hold on to and, and concern and worry. And I like that you don't find out what really happened with her. Yeah. That you keep it a mystery with Lucy Gray, even as the song, singing's happening. Yeah. Uh, and, and the is woods. Is this just a thing that the birds are recalling above him? Is this just an echo in his mind? Did she really, you know? Yeah, Does she even to really me? exist. Yeah, the Hunger Games is it actually all in his happened. Head? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like that, yeah, like like I guess that's the last thought that I kind of have is is, is 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 yeah. I think the the most important thing this movie had to do for itself, given what it set out to do, is sell the character journey of Coriolanus Snow. And I thought the most graceful thing about it was the way they did sort of weave in and out of moral gray areas, and you can see him. In multiple, in, in almost in you know the same scene at times, you know, like swaying more toward a benevolent side, swaying more toward the machinations of the capital, you know, it, right, it, right, you know, for for as kind of straightforward or as surface level as certain things were, it felt like that part of the story they really always managed. Like I love that thing with Peter Dinklage because yeah, you think he's just being a snape about it because like oh, I knew your dad back in the day, Potter. Like you know, I'm gonna <laughs> stick it to you. Whereas you know, you come back around and it's like oh, this guy. It, and that's at a point in the story where 
Corio is sort of seemingly flirting with more of a humanist perspective or is being drawn more toward a humanist perspective. So that gives you more cause to suspect that uh, the the um, what high bottom or whatever his name is like mm-hmm. is a bad guy. And then later on, you oh, you find out he's helping out the rebels and he did this because he thinks you're just like your dad, even though you've like tried not to be throughout this movie. But now you're still being set down that path, you know, and, it's, and I think we needed some depiction of the dad. That would have been nice. <laughs> yeah, because there was all this emphasis on him. And I was like, yeah. And I didn't really, f- if, if, if they still kept it so vague. Just something. We don't, yeah. I, like, for me, you don't even need to see his face necessarily, but, like, show a window into the moments where he did have time with his dad to form any association. Because we first meet him as, like, a kid out in the snow, like, getting taken in from, you know squalor so like where was how old was he when he knew his dad like all there's questions there i think what i never really latched onto with the movie is why snow cares to get this far <laughs> yeah because <laughs> yeah. he's the special his dad created the hunger games <laughs> but you know like at the very beginning i'm like of course i'm not going to relate with this there's got to be something there to relate with the motivation I'm like i think they're trying to tell me that all this stuff with his cousin and his grandma. He really loves them, so he wants to take care of them is what the movie's, I think, trying to tell me. And we'll never but, be evicted again. <laughs> but that wasn't... I don't know. I, 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 like, this specific Why thing... Why are you going to lead this place? This specific thing, yeah, he was aspiring to at the very b- jump of this movie. And why are you so I, inspired I, with ways to make the games that much better? Because this whole thing is predicated on, like, oh, he's got this crazy-ass plan for how to make the games great, and I feel like we glossed over that. Because I think there was something there in the text about... Um, and maybe I missed it, but I, 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 pay, I feel like I pay attention to everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> the... The... Uh, because it seems like the family was once respected yeah and once of regality in some regard and then now they're not yeah and he wants to reclaim that good name i think maybe I, but he also seems very detached but, to but cold it, but it also seems like everyone who finds out who his dad is is other than peter dinklage is like your dad was an all right guy you know yeah man so, he gave us uh, this so i don't know I mean, but he didn't know that, right? Not until later. I, don't I, I thought it seemed like he didn't know his dad gave him until the very end. Yeah. It seems like uh, he took somehow, for some reason, that it's been lost. Yeah. Not even. Or, ever, or maybe just he was never in a position to have it revealed to him or something like that. But even such, Why? yeah, it's like. Oh, that's right. It's because the Hunger Games hadn't even happened yet. Because yeah. the movie started off three years before. He gets taken in, yeah, three years before when they're like little kids. And then, mm-hmm. and then so sometime, I, I guess, what is it? He's taken in by the guy who would eventually create the Hunger Games. <laughs> that, like that part got confused because we don't really ever see him. And we see Grandma or whoever that is. Uh, but yeah, and then we cut to 10 years later or whatever. Yeah, because the movie starts off three years before the first Hunger Games. Yeah. Right? It said the first Hunger Games. Yeah. Um, and then I guess they had that conversation through a few years before the first Hunger Games. Like, like that's the thing is, yeah, like it would have been, even if the, this is not about the first Hunger Games, it would have been nice to check in with the first Hunger Games. Like, I feel like that would kind of almost be important for how close the part of the point is like, we've only been doing this for a little while and you know, they're flailing out here. We got to figure out a way to really beef this up and, and get everyone on board and I think that would have been. I think that would be a really challenging. It's like the first the movie the, the of the Purge franchise, and there's there are, <laughs> there are correlations. I think you can draw parallels oh, yeah. in terms of the story and what they're talking about and what they're doing between what the Hunger Games stories are about and what the Purge movies are about. Yeah, even though they're very different movies, there's a lot of similarities <laughs> at yeah, the same absolutely. time um, in terms of some contextual things, and and I think that would have made for in terms of like a, a thematic piece the a more interesting thematic piece yeah because you would see how people like were re- reacting to when this was first announced and when they were going to do it and then how the response went over when it went when when it uh when it does go down yeah and then the unknown of how how this is supposed to work mm-hmm. you know and, and figure yeah. it out see that's the thing is you could have a hunger games again and 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 do you know the part of any you know continuing franchise where we do the thing from the first time again but you can give it a whole new you know uh veneer and a whole new kind of you know uh, 
set of circumstances that could make it fresh and interesting in a more rudimentary and rough kind of way for sure and tap into you know the the signature aspect of like what drew people to this franchise in many ways like yeah some some pretty straightforward but you know very invested commentary on society in various ways and even this like it flirts at the end with they they either reject society leave and go someplace else or they try to climb to the top and, and fix it and all that and so like yeah the things were so bad and these wars happened and we split up all these districts and stuff, and it was so bad we had to create this game, <laughs> right, know, right, right, to, to make an example, but also just like sate people's anger and keep people complacent and whatever else, and like, and yeah, like it, it is odd to me not to at least touch on that. Like, I feel like maybe they're just keeping that ace up their sleeve. So if they, you know, want to in another five or six years, or if this trilogy doesn't work, they can go first Hunger Games. Let's get Cycle Three going. Um, but it, I don't know. I feel like. Again, for drawing it so close to that and doing some of that, I feel like you could have just made that stuff even more rich by at least touching on the first games. Well, uh, overall, uh, you know, I'd probably give this movie uh, like a... S- There's a lot of things I really liked about it, though, man. Like Whenever Rachel Zegler was on screen, I, and I really did find a lot of suspense in the last ha- hour yeah. of this film. Yeah. And uh, and I'm glad they yeah. put it there. Like, you know, again, yeah. in the math, I, w- I would rather be left off on an interesting note Oh yeah, no. I mean, rush it, through Act Three. <laughs> it feels grounded and gritty, and it feels like the real world allegories are even more present. And you put Snow in a position where there are stakes, where you like you start to semi forget, like, oh yeah, he's supposed to somehow get back to the capital and be when you can, he's, 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 he's stripped down. Yeah. He, and I think that's another thing that helps with the character. He's stripped down. He's vulnerable. He's taken away from everything. And he's yeah. traversed all levels of this society, and he's been in favor. Yeah. He's been out of favor, and and in that last half, you're able to kind of live. I think one thing doing this perspective allows you to do is live in the banality of the day to day of this shit, which the third act really does do because he's he's a stormtrooper. <laughs> well, know? the other thing I really liked that I completely forgot to touch on was that you actually get a sense of community from District Twelve, where yeah. in, in this like movie that feels is a dystopian future, you you normally don't get something that feels joyous, celebratory in any way. And you get that there when they are, and that was one of the elements of the musical side where uh, that connection when they are singing and dancing and and, uh, and Lucy Gray is performing. I'm like, oh yeah, there's a real, there is a community here. Yeah, and you are connected and endeared to that. At least I was, and I don't. That's something that I don't feel the other Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, you know, just felt like they were everyone's broken, throwing bread in the mud, you know? Yeah, like it's just dreary and yeah. dirty all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Which is part of that life, but also, because yeah, it the shows the contrast. Literally. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I thought that, like, finding having that kind of community with the with, with the Southern flair to it was actually pretty cool. Yeah. And also, you know, and, and to get Rachel Zegler, who I... I don't think she's Caucasian. Uh, she's something. She's like Latina or something. I don't know what she yeah. is. But she's, she's obviously not. Color. She's not Caucasian. And to to see someone who who embodies such a Southern Belle kind of vibe, who is yeah. not Caucasian, I thought was actually kind of ref- <laughs> was like different and, and refreshing. And it balances and, things yeah. out because she is singing a lot of like very bluesy spirituals, which I think would be kind of extra tacky if it was yeah. just like a white girl. <laughs> yeah, and I think some people might be like, "What the hell?" Uh, you know. But I'm like, wait, all all that has to happen is someone just grows up around that. <laughs> you yeah. felt the voice, the gate, it's matters in the, the culture. You well, know? it's yeah. like when you see like I don't know, a Japanese guy who grows up in Australia. He has an Australian accent. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, so this is this is clearly a place in which it's people Australia. have been all just jumbled <laughs> yeah. around by war and class, and now you know wherever you wind up, especially her is like a nomad. You know, like wherever you wind up is sort of whatever culture and you're going to pick up. Like, I know we see that in life all the time, uh, but in, in movies and shows, you really don't. You know? There's a uniformity yeah, yeah. That, that often happens, yeah. whereas here I thought that, yeah, they, they, they managed to make the district feel alive yeah. and feel like, yeah, despite, you know, the thing that all, like many places in squalor, there still can be senses of community and ways to find joy and respite, whilst also never kind of being unaware of the fact that you're always under the boot a thousand percent and, and yeah you can feel yeah it's like I, I liked like i liked getting those bits where you do at least just have sort of like life's happening and people are breaking out in song and they're dancing and you really kind of feel like what a day in the life is like over here you know and what we're fighting for yeah i can't help but think like even though i like the third act a lot the, the there are i can't help but at times be like 
I really feel like a, a half hour would have added this in, and maybe it's there in the book. But <laughs> even even with his friend, that that's where the part I don't forget his name, Sergey. Oh, uh, so 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 jury, yeah. so, so ju- <laughs> so, something like that. The 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 the. <laughs> The best friendship there could have been a heartbreaking thing if at all he did feel compelled to help him out. If he did think like the if there was a debate with um, with them truly of potentially helping out the rebels and stuff. Yeah, and that way there creates a real conflict, and you see him actually making a choice that, and it even would drive home that descent, that character arc that he has more when he does go. Like no, he's shutting this shit down. He's not going to help, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and giving that care again. It's that breathing room thing of like, man, just a couple more scenes showing these guys in a joyous moment and in a moment where you can see how his buddy is is rubbing off on him because he they establish that he's his only friend. You're the only guy who sticks up for this dude who clearly has yeah. a sympathetic side for the plebs out there, you know. And, and he speaks to his humanity. And I think you you said something early on about certain scenes feeling kind of soap opera esque because the emotion has to be high because it's the important scenes that we're cutting to. Uh, but I feel like, especially with a character like that, like they managed to get a good amount of the tragedy, but I feel like some of it, some of the real contrast and the real weight of it is a bit garbled. Like they kind of make, they kind of streamline it in a way where you're like, yeah, he's going to betray him. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like you want to feel like, uh, will this be less of a direct betrayal and more of like a choice made under one pretense only to be like, Oh God, no, what did I do? You know, there could have been more debate there and there could have been again, just a, a greater detailing of that f- kind of swaying of Coriolanus soul between two states and two ideologies, you know? Yeah. And I think in a book when you're reading a bunch of te- additional texts, so yeah, but in a movie, you, you got to do a little bit more creative work. Do some scene work. You do some scene work, get a little more creative work to drive the, it home. The plot and yeah. the, cause the, cause he especially, uh, uh, Sojourn, whatever his name is, is very much a, a themes character. I'm here for the, to bring the themes and the text of the themes <laughs> yeah, t- <laughs> and to present those to you, yeah. Coriolanus Snow. And I'm like, cool, good. Like, that's you need that. And I like that, you know, they have a whole argument, kind of their whole ideology is like, do we do direct action or do we play the long game? And, and you know, what are our motivations really? And yeah, it's like that stuff could have felt a lot more lived in and you could have felt a, a little less... You know, the, the a little less of that puppy killing feeling when it really does come down, you know, on on his head. <laughs> thousand percent. Yeah. Thousand percent. And the weight of that broken promise of I'll protect you. you know? Overall, 7.5 for me, John. Yeah, yeah. 7.2. All right. Give us 7. Point. All right. Either way, I think we were both, like, pleasantly surprised and, like, the, the good stuff was better than expected. And yeah, the, stuff the stuff that stuff doesn't work could have worked. Stuff I did not show up for at all were the things that <laughs> I thought were the best parts. <laughs> it's a great surprise. Yeah, yeah. Great surprise. All the stuff I did not care about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just beforehand. I was like, oh, damn. This is actually the most interesting. Yeah. yeah this is well done. Of all yeah. the people, like just bound to a franchise. Yeah. Well done, Francis Lawrence and company. Yeah, but I think you should move on. Uh, yeah, I, I think really all these dudes need to move <laughs> yeah. on. I think you should. Think you should. <laughs> all righty, guys, leave your thoughts down below. We thought Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And uh, hey, before we go, let's end this with a paper. <laughs> Anissa Oliva. Anissa, it is 2024. Oh. And I was thinking about it. In the year of COVID, Oh, which, you know, it's still very much real, but in the, still out there. But in the year when, you know, the pandemic was at its heights out here in the States, I remember we would do live streams and you were contributing boatloads of cash. You were like ready to go broke. Yeah. And I just feel like you don't really do that anymore. Yeah, it's been a long time. And part of me is wondering why we should still be shouting you out. I mean, yeah, you you pledge for this, but what is that? I mean, that's just to get in the door, you know. That's just the cover charge. But now we have a we have an expectation bar of what to receive from yeah. your end, and the bar only ever rises. It really limits the passion behind the shout outs it now does. for you. It does when we're not financially incentivized for the bonus that it could lead to. A more stimulating shout out comes from a more stimulating stimulus package. And I'm not dropping a hint here. I'm not saying what you should do. There are a could and would scenario here that could be happening. And ought to mandatory. Hey, but hey, hey, 
I'm no gaslighter. Hey, all right? hey. All right. I didn't hear nothing, G. You I'm no nothing. I'm no manipulator around here, so uh, I I can't tell you what to do with your funds. No, 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 never. But I'm just saying it's a new year. It's just friendly advice. You and know. Um, the pandemic height was a while ago, and we went through all of 2023. Well, you risked your life out there. And now we're in 2024. I'm just hoping that, whoa, in 2023, were you like saving up some stock here to That's dish right. out monthly? Because she knew it was going to come back and then she would start showering us again to protect yeah. us from the, all the antigens outside. I'm not, I'm not, not suggesting, just, you know. Just implying. Just uh, throwing a thought. Just thinking Food out thought. loud. Just, 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 just spitballing here, right? Just spitballing here. Go with me but, on this. That's so you're, you do what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're an independent woman. Uh-huh. Do what you want. Yeah. And the great thing is so often your interests and needs align perfectly with ours. So that makes us independent women too. Just saying, give us give us a lot give more. Give us some money. Give us a lot more. Give pledge more. Find the Streamlabs link, go there. And I'm it's also s- offline super chat. Saying to let me be clear that if you do end up sending us a lot more money due to this shout out, we are going to be filled with obnoxious amounts of guilt. So please don't do it. Do not actually, <laughs> the disclaimer, no. this is not a serious <laughs> shout out. Normally I would really just stick to the bit here, but. We can put a long like, zoom on it so that it's is clear like, that this is a joke. We know you pretty well. <laughs> and I'm don't like, take I this feel the like wrong this way. joke could really go badly. Yeah. And you would be like, oh shit, I better send them. Some. Please don't. Just that you I have just, been here for as long as you have and have been as lovely for for as yeah. long is the greatest gift. Please so, don't do it. So yeah, no we don't need it. We really don't. For anything, you've been amazing, and you helped us get through a tough period on you the did. channel. So thank you, and I'll never forget that. And we've, of course, gotten to know you as an actual human being and person, and you've been a wonderful, Jim. So I hope in 2024 uh, that you are able to use money to invest so that we could just have pure financial freedom, some stocks, and also some property. I hope you get married this year. I hope you find a guy, a marry man. him. Hey, better. Purchase, worst things you could do with your money. Man. Worst things you could do with your money. Mm-hmm.